everyday people like you and me living their lives one minute and the next they lay dying they traveled from this world to one beyond but what they found was pure terror they returned and these are their true stories it's very easy to be an atheist when you're successful but it's very difficult to be an atheist when you're laying on your deathbed and that you can either go to heaven or you'll go to hell and there ain't nothing else hear the voice of one that has heard the screams this may be your only chance to safely go to hell and back I've got a hospital gown on and it's like really everything's really real and I hear people calling me outside the room and they're saying to me in soft gentle voices Howard you gotta come with us now come quickly come out here so I go over the doorway of the room and there's people out in the hallway and they're um, uh, the hallway's dank it's gray it's not it's not light or dark it's just gray and they're all in grayness Howard, come Howard, quickly. come out here. Howard, come quickly. Come with us. Howard, we've been waiting for you. Waiting. I Wait. left the room, which was real, clear, bright, and went into the hallway, which was dank and hazy, and um, followed these people. We had a very long journey. There's no, there's no time, and whenever I make a reference to time, <laughs> It's just an illusion because there was no time in this place. But this journey, if I were to recreate it, I'd have to walk like from Nashville to Louisville or something to, to recreate the, the walk with these people. And as we walked, they stayed around me and kept moving me on, and it kept getting darker and darker. Um, they were becoming more and more openly hostile to me. First, they were sort of syrupy sweet to get me to go with them and then when I was going along with them it was like hurry up keep moving you know shut up stop asking questions you know they started getting more um, ugly and so we get into complete darkness and I'm absolutely terrified these people are very hostile I don't know where I am I said I'm not going to go with you any further they said um, you're almost there and we started to fight. I, just, I was trying to get away from them. They were pushing and pulling at me. And um, there are now a lot of them. What originally had been like a handful, now was, since it was darkness, it opened, made hundreds or thousands. I, don't, I mean, I have no idea. And they're playing with me. You know, clearly they could have just destroyed me if they wanted to. They didn't want to destroy me. What they wanted to do was they wanted to inflict pain on me because they derived, pleasure isn't the right word, but they derived, derived satisfaction out of the pain that I experienced. So what they were doing in the beginning part was, it's real hard for me to talk about and I don't, and I'm not going to tell you much about it, just a little bit, because um, it gets, I mean, just gets too ugly. Uh, but the, initially they were like tearing and biting, um, tearing with their fingernails, scratching, gouging, ripping, and then uh, biting. And trying to defend myself, trying to fight them off, trying to get away from them, but there's it's like being and uh, like I was lifted behind, right out of my body and hovered over my body looking down at myself and looking around and next thing I knew I went through the ceiling of the of the room I was in and I was in as transported into a very 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 black dark void I could hear like somebody speaking to me like like telepathy and it was explaining to me many, many things that I have, I no longer remember, but most of the, the idea was, was explaining to you the whys of life, um, why there was evil in the world, why, why this, why you know, people have questions all the time. These were being answered to you as you were being transported to this light.
by the time you got to the to where the light was, you were you knew you knew what happened. You know what's going. On. You know you know what happened. You know you died. You know you're going to be judged, and everything that's as you're traveling, it's made so clear to you that what's happening is perfectly just and right. Oh yeah, I was going through the, the darkness and I was approaching the light there. And I noticed that on this rock, there was a big huge boulder right out in the middle of this darkness. And there was a person sitting on a throne. And the individual that was sitting on it um, was emanating light very very powerful bright light and there was a love and compassion too but also a firmness and fairness emanating from this person and I'm going you know who is this and the basic question that was coming to me through this thought was look what you have done with God's gift that was actually Jesus was speaking this to me he said if I let you into heaven with what you know now that I'm just right perfect you would misuse that and keep sin alive in heaven you can't come in he told me it was granted to me to see a land unknown that's best forgotten but will not be left unseen that was it and then he took out all these keys out of his rope just pulled them out and as he pulled them out you could see the the scar where the the, the nails were kind of like in the wrist area and it kind of pulled the bones apart it's kind of traumatic looking and he had these keys and the keys were odd shapes and design and he opened up a he walked over to a place and he opened, stuck this key into this looked like a, a gate and a door opened then the veil came over and it was dark again I couldn't see it all I could see it was the Lord and I was being moved toward this door and I went through the, that door into a void and it smelled horrible hear these screeches and noises and sirens. The most thing I remember the most was slurping noises and, and um, screams and I could feel um, heat, really hot heat. The next thing you know I was falling through the sky. It looked like the sky and I hit the ground. You know, it kind of hurt and I stood up and I, and I looked and I go, where am I? All these people ran out, and some of them looked like people that were dead that I knew, and other people I knew that were not dead. And they come around me, slapping me on the back. I said, they got there awful quick because the house looked far away, but all of a sudden they were there, slapping me on the back, welcoming me there. But something just wasn't quite right with them because they looked weird. They had yellow glints in their eye, and their eyes were almost uh, reptile-like. I looked over and I saw and they're just filthy, smelly creatures. And they were just starting to come at me like they're gonna shred me to pieces. And I just went ahead and I got up and the next thing I knew, I was on a large, wide, dusty, flat road. I just came out of a cell. And in the walls are embedded peoples in cells. And we pointed to another cube, and in this cube, I was looking at there were people inside these cubes. Some were vacant, some people were waiting for people to arrive like I did. There was this person in there, and I was just looking at them, and then it was showing me another person, another person. Each person that was in their cube was like they were reliving parts of their life. My ears, I began to become deaf, very slowly, faintly become deaf. My eyes became blind. My eyes were open and I became blinded. And I knew that death was gripping my soul. And then all of a sudden, I felt myself, my soul, leave my body. And I instantly began falling and falling. And at that moment, I knew I was no longer in control of my destiny. And I ended up in a place that was complete torment and my body was burning I became a tormented being of fear and as I began looking out and I saw all of these other people 
and everybody was screaming in pain. Eternity is real, and hell is real, and heaven is real. A young paramedic looked down into my face, and I could barely see him. I was so weak. But he said, Sir, you need Jesus Christ. And I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know what he was talking about. So my reaction to that was to begin cursing. And uh, again, he stated to me, you need Jesus. And as he was talking to me, it, it appeared like the ambulance literally exploded in flames. I, I thought it had actually blown up. It filled with smoke. And immediately I was moving through that smoke as if through a tunnel. And after some period of time coming out of the smoke, I began to hear the voices of a multitude of people screaming and groaning and crying. But as I looked down, the sensation was looking down upon a, a, a volcanic opening and seeing fire and smoke and, and people inside of this burning place screaming and crying. They were burning, but they weren't burning up. They weren't being consumed. And then the sensation of moving downward into this. But, but the most terrible part of it, I began to recognize many of the people that I was seeing in these flames as if a close-up lens on a camera was bringing their faces close to me, I could, I could see their features and see the agony and the pain and the frustration. And a number of them began to call my name and said, Ronnie, don't come to this place. There's no way out. There's no escape. If you come here, there's no way out. Now, I, I'm a professed atheist, and when I say a professed atheist, I didn't believe in God. Uh, I believed in the power of the universe because I'd seen it. You know, I'd seen it, life and death. As a physician, I dealt with life and death. I, I believed in something, but don't talk to me about God, and surely don't talk to me about a resurrection or a virgin birth or this type of thing. Now, see, it's very easy to be an atheist. When you're successful, man can sit back and say, I don't need God. What is God? But it's very difficult to be an atheist when you're laying on your deathbed because you begin to think, what if these people are right? What if there is a heaven and a hell? I would begin to fade away, and as I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. You know, I don't know where I was out of my body. Now, there are people that talk about the, the, a light. There are people that talk about floating above. There are t people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt untold terror. Untold terror. 